just going to have a look at the full component build, um, how all the wiring, the brake lines and fuel lines fit into the chassis. Um, so this is how you'll receive your component build, a fully panelled chassis on the build trolley. Um, and one of the first jobs we'll then be putting all the wiring in. Um, we've already covered the wiring to give you a brief idea in another video, but now we'll have a look how it actually integrates into the chassis along with all the other systems. Um, we'll start looking probably with brake lines for a start. So all your copper brake lines will come pre-flared, cut to length ready. Um, so they're labelled up um, front left, front right, rear, and there's two little ones that go to each rear side from the T. The brake lines are clipped on the underside of the chassis, all the way around, and then actually hidden behind the panel. The chassis side rail, this hides the brake lines um, and all your wires, so it looks a lot cleaner. So you don't see anything in the engine bay, all you see is a nice clean work. The holes in the clips are pre-drilled and fitted when we panel. So your brake lines here, spaced, and then going down the tunnel, they're going down, and we'll look at the brake cylinder from the other side in just a minute. Whilst we're also in the engine bay area, we'll have a quick look at the wiring. So on the left hand side of the car is where we run the main harness. So the harness is coming out, going along here, and then again underneath the chassis rail. This is clipped up using the same clips that we use for the brake lines, so it's all tied up, nice and neat out the way where you can't see it. You've just got the wire left for your start solenoid for your starter. It comes round the front. There's the earth tag on your chassis, so your front earth for the loom will go on there, and also the horn attaches onto that point as well. All your other loom goes along, along this cross section on the underside, along here again on the underside. So this does your your right hand light and your cooling fans on there as well. Your indicator for that side, your indicator for the left hand side is there ready to go through onto your light unit when they're fitted. So that's everything on the front loom section. We'll cover the battery and battery leads at another point when we're looking at the engine because they, they daisy chain on from one to another. Um, that's the basic layout of the engine bay. We'll then have a look into the uh, under the scuttle area. But in terms of wiring, the Gen 2 chassis now has a bracket that's ready on the chassis. So your wiring harness and your main fuse box, relays and everything mount to that. There's two M6 bolts that hold that on there. Your loom then comes out the bottom, there's a cut out cover. This goes down to the front and then your rear one, rear section comes around along here and then again follows down. We'll have a look at this one underneath in a minute as well. So you've got your rear brake line coming off your cylinder. This is clipped all the way under the right hand tunnel side. Coming around, keeping it as tight as you can here to give you room for the handbrake cable. Then it comes up, loops around and again just to clear the handbrake cable. The wiring loom is then attached using the same clips, really nice and tight, keeping it well out of the way of everything, nice and secure. Again, maximum um, space in the 300mm for IVA, we generally go about half that or measure a distance, divide it up equally so it's all nice and even, it looks a lot smarter. So that's your wiring loom clipped on there, you've got your tail off ready for your handbrake, warning lights and your tail off ready for your speedo sensor. Then on the opposite side of the tunnel we put the fuel lines. The fuel lines, we have the two nylon fuel lines, um, the red and the black. Red's normally for the uh, feed, black for the return. On the Gen 2, these go through the brackets on the chassis that have the grommets in, so they feed all the way through. We then just put another couple of clips in just to help secure in it, just to be extra safe. And they terminate just at the front under the um, scuttle. terminate here and then we connect on for the swirl pot and everything which again we'll look at later making sure you put the um, metal ends in so you don't crush the pipe when the connections go on and then go into the back of the car so at the back of the car again you've got your brake pipe coming through it's looping down so you've got room for your handbrake cable so you're not going to get the brake pipe anywhere near the handbrake cable that comes up into your four-way t-piece and you then have your left and right tails off that go to your rear wheels and then the brake pressure switch goes into the middle there. The pipes again come through for the fuel lines, the rubber hose connects on to the fuel system which we've covered in the previous video. Your wiring loom comes through, goes round to the right hand side on here. You've got your tail off that goes to your brake light, 
you've then got the rear section of the loom do all your rear lights, your fuel tank sender and your fuel pumps and then goes around behind the fuel tank there's also an earth point on the back here that connects onto there the front section here there's an earth point for the main harness at the front this will connect to one of the studs on here you've then got your engine link um, which is all labelled up, everything is labelled up. This will drop down through here and then the engine link will connect to that. We've then got your tail off for your wiper motor, which will be behind the fuse box and then comes up to here where your wiper motor goes in the pre drilled holes. You've then got everything else for your dashboard and controls. So we have the wiring off for the instruments. Again, just what's clipping up and then when you have your instrument loom, the two put together as you put the dash in as a whole piece. We've got your column switches, again we we'll plug into your column switches, when we go, lower dash loom, so the little piece at the bottom of all your auxiliary switches are in there, you've got your ignition switch which will go onto the barrel, then there's a couple of switches for your um, reverse switch which drops down into the gearbox and the brake fluid low level which will come through here and go onto the reservoir, so all these just want keeping up for now and then as you fit the components you can route them and attach them as you go. So that's having a, a basic look of how all the, the wiring, the plumbing and the brake lines go into the car uh, to give you an overview and an idea of how to start. Um, I'd suggest starting with the brake pipes first, then the loom and then get your fuel lines in. Um, on the back you've got all your fuel system that's already there, so your pump fuel filter is already attached on the Gen 2 onto the fuel tank, so it's just a case of joining them up, making sure, okay, go red for feed, black for return, then you know which order you've got at the front. Um, brake pipe, just make sure you have nice radiuses everywhere. If it's, it's not gonna chafe, get caught or foul anything. There's an IBA thing, if it's going over an edge, make sure you've got a clearance. Um, nip all the brake pipes up as you go. Um, make sure everything's clipped up and secure. One other point just to watch, on the front here, just put the brake lines coming through on the back edge of the box section here. You don't want them on the underside where there's potential where you could scuff them or wear them with your feet. And that's the same as well for the brake light that goes across to the left hand side. Don't run it on that box section anywhere where it could do. If, if you put the engine in, there's a possibility of crushing it. So we don't run it there, we run it further back. So there's no chance of crushing it with the engine as you're installing it. So for securing all the ancillary parts, we generally use two types of clip, just to have a quick look. So we use what's known as the, a P-clip, um, for obvious reasons, um, and then we use a rivet, generally a rivet with a slightly bigger head, just so it, it fills the hole and pulls up so it's nice and secure. These are generally what we use for the brake pipes. For the fuel line and the loom, we use what's called a saddle clip. So this rivets on, and then a tie wrap goes through, so you can have your, your bundle of cable sat in the clip, and then pull it tight on the cable tie. Just make sure you cut the cable ties off and if you can position them in a way where they're not going to be sharp or anything. So if you're working on the car in the future, you're not going to cut and graze your arms. And these would go for the fuel lines, any wiring bundles. And make sure you size the rivet so it pulls up nice. Um, so for instance, at the front here, if you look underneath from here, well, from that way, if you look in here, we're using the saddles and the saddles and the cables in, it's nicely tie wrapped up. It keeps everything nice and clean out of the way, really secure. Generally two clips here. It's, it's more than you need for IVA, but it holds it more secure. It looks a lot neater. Um, I'd be more looking for the neatness of it than the IVA requirements because we're, we're exceeding them. Um, make sure you've got plenty of room to then connect all your lights up and that so you're not pulling any cables taut. Um, that's basically it really, is a, a bit of an overview of how to put the systems in.